Now, the next symmetry law that I would like to discuss is an interesting one that has an interesting history, and that's the question of reflection in space. If I build a piece of apparatus, let's say a clock, and then I come over here and I build another clock exactly the same way, but like this one looks in a mirror. I don't mean I look at this one in a mirror only. I mean I build another clock which is exact built to be a Chinese copy of what the other one looks like in a mirror. In other words, I have the number two painted neatly on the dial here, then I paint the number two on the other way around over here. So, should have, I got an opportunity to make a drawing. Two on one clock, <laughs> two on the other clock. which is wound one way in one clock is wound in the corresponding opposite way in the other clock. They match each other like light, like two gloves, right and left. Now we wind up the two clocks. We set them in corresponding positions. I was going to say the same, but we set them to the mirrored positions and we let them tick. Question, will they always agree with each other? Will all of the machinery of the clock go in the mirror image of the other one? And uh, I don't know what you would guess about that. You probably guess it's true, and most people did guess it was true. Of course, uh, uh, we're not talking about geography. Uh, we, don't, we can distinguish right and left by geography. We can say that if we stand in Florida and look at New York, the ocean is on the right, and that distinguishes right and left. And, we have, we brought, and if the clock involves the water, of the sea and then New York and so on. Then it wouldn't work if you built it the other way because it's, it's tickler, it wouldn't get in the water. But what we have to imagine, of course, is that the geography of the earth is turned around too on the other clock. Anything that's involved must be turned around. Nor are we interested in history. For example, if you pick up a screw in a machine shop, the chances are it's right hand thread. And you might argue the other clock isn't going to be the same as this one because it's harder to get the screws. But that's just a question of what kind of uh, things we make. So that altogether, the first guess is that nothing make, it doesn't make any difference. And it turns out that the laws of gravitation are such that it wouldn't make any difference if it worked by gravity. The laws of electricity and magnetism are such that if in addition it had electric and magnetic guts, <laughs> currents and wires and whatnot, it would still vote. The corresponding clock would run the same. And if the clock involved uh, nuclear reactions, ordinary nuclear reactions, uh, to make it run, it wouldn't make any difference either. But it does make a little bit of difference. <laughs> I'll come to it, what makes a difference in a minute, but the first possibility that may suggest itself to you if you know anything much, you may have heard that it's possible to measure the concentration of sugar in water by putting polarized light through the water. If you put the piece of Polaroid that, sets, that lets light through in a certain axis through the water, then you'll find in order to, when you watch the light as it goes through deeper and deeper sugar water, you have to turn the Polaroid at that have another piece of Polaroid at the other end of the water, more and more to the right as the stuff goes through. Uh, maybe it's to the left, I, I, I can't remember, but let's say to the right, <laughs> as you go through deeper, deeper solution. And if you go make the water light go the other way through the solution, it's still to the right. So there's a right hand way, there's a, a difference for right and left. So if we put sugar water in the clocks and light, then if we put, if we put say, in one t a tank of water and make the light go through and turn and put the Polaroid so it can just get through, and make the corresponding image on the other side, hoping the light would turn this way. It won't, it'll turn the other way, and it won't go through right. So by using sugar water, our two clocks can be made different. <laughs> so it's a very remarkable fact. And uh, it isn't true, therefore, at first, that uh, the two clocks will be, uh, that the physical laws are symmetric for reflection. However, it's possible to make sugar in the laboratory. The sugar that we got that time might have been from sugar beets, but sugar isn't a complicated molecule. And it's possible to make sugar in a laboratory out of carbon dioxide or water and going through lots and lots of stages in between and make artificial sugar. When you put the artificial sugar in there, which is chemically and measured every way, it seems to be the same, it doesn't turn the light. Then if you put bacteria in the water, in the sugar water, bacteria eat the sugar. And when you eat, let the bacteria eat the sugar, and then try with what's left. It turns out first they only eat half the sugar. 
the artificial sugar. Second, when you're all done, it turns to the left, the stuff that's left. And now you find the explanation to all this is the following. A sugar is a complicated molecule, a set of balls, atoms, in some complicated arrangement. If you make exactly the same arrangement, but left as right, like if the arrangement is complicated like this, then you make one the same way. <laughs> then every distance between every pair of atoms is the same, in one as in the other. The energy of the molecules is exactly the same. And for all chemical phenomena not involving life, they're the same. But living creatures find a difference. The bacteria eats one kind and not the other. The sugar that comes from sugar beets is only one kind, all left-hand molecules. And so, or right hand, right. and so it turns the light one way. The bacteria can only eat that kind of molecules. When we manufacture the sugar from substances which themselves are not asymmetrical, simple gases, we make both kinds an equal number. Then, if we let the bacteria eat, they'll eat the kind they can eat, and the other is left, and that's why it comes out the other way. It's possible to separate the two by looking through magnifying glasses at the crystals and separating them and so on, as Pasteur discovered, and uh, so forth, so that we can I, uh, definitely show that all this makes sense, and even our artificial sugar, then we can separate ourselves. We don't have to wait for the bacteria. But the interesting thing is that the bacteria can do this. Does that mean that the living processes don't obey the same laws of and so on? Apparently not. It seems that in the living creatures there are many, many complicated molecules and they all have a kind of thread to them. One of the most characteristic molecules in living creatures are you know, proteins, and it takes a little while to explain the details, but let's put it very simply. They have a corkscrew property, and they go, let's say, to the right. <laughs> now, as far as we can tell chemically, if we, make, we could make this chemically, the same thing to the left, it would not function biologically because it wouldn't, when it met the other proteins, fit the same way. That is, a left-hand thread will fit a left-hand thread, but a thread left and right don't fit very well the same way. So the bacteria, having a left-hand thread in their chemical inside, can distinguish the left and right sugar. How did they get that way? Physics and chemistry cannot distinguish the molecules. They can only make both kinds, but biology can. It's easy to believe that the explanation is that in a long, long ago, when the life processes first began, some accidental molecule got started and propagated itself by reproducing itself and so on until after many, many years, these funny-looking blobs with the blob prongs sticking out yak at each other. <laughs> but they are nothing but the offspring of the first few molecules. And then this accident of the first few molecules that it happened to form one way instead of the other. It, just, it has to be one or the other. So the thing that reproduces itself is either left or right. And then it goes on and propagates this on and on. It's much like the screws in the machine shop. You use right-hand thread screws to make new right-hand thread screws and so on. So this is probably one of the deepest, the deepest uh, demonstrations of the, the fact that the protein molecules are exactly the same and all life, they all have exactly the same kind of thread. It's probably one of the deepest demonstrations of the uniformity of the ancestry of life, the common ancestry of all life, and uh, from back, in fact, to the completely molecular level. Now, in order to s test better this question about whether the laws of physics are the same right and left, we can put the problem to ourselves this way. Suppose that we were in telephone conversation with a Martian or an Octurian or something. We don't know where he is, and we would like to describe things to him. We want to tell him about things. We say, well, how is he going to understand the words? So that's been studied very much by Professor Morrison here. And he has pointed out that one way would be to start out and say, tick, tick, two, tick, 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 three, and so on. And pretty soon the guy would catch on to the numbers. And then, <laughs> and then as you understand your number system, then you can write lots of numbers, and you could, for example, write a whole sequence of numbers that represents the weights, the proportional weights of the different atoms in succession. And then say hydrogen, 1.0, uh, deuterium, and so on, so on. And he would, after he sat down with all those numbers and piddled around a while, would discover that the mathematical ratios were the same as the ratios of the weights of the elements, and therefore those names must refer to elements, and so on. Gradually you could, in talking to him, have a common language. In many ways, common. There are many. Now comes the problem. Suppose that he says, uh, you fellows, are, after we get familiar with him, he says, you're very nice. Now I'd like to know what you look like. 
And you start out, well, we're about six feet tall. He says, six feet, how, far, how big is a foot? Well, it's very easy, you say. A foot, six feet tall is 170,000 million hydrogen atoms high. <laughs> well, it's not a joke, it's a possible way of describing six feet to someone that has no measure, assuming that we cannot send them any samples, nor can we both look at the same object. We have to tell them how big we are, we can do it. That's because the laws of physics are not unchanged under a scale change. So we can use that fact to use the properties of the scale to determine, uh, I mean, you can use that fact to determine the scale. Well, here we describe ourselves after telling us six feet tall and we're so-and-so bilateral on the outside and we look like this and there are these prongs sticking out and all this. And he says, that's very interesting. What do you look like on the inside? So we describe the heart and so on and we say, now put the heart in on the left side. Now the question is, how can we tell them which side is the left side? By what possible, you say, ah, you take beet sugar, see, and you put it, <laughs> and you put it in water, and it turns. Only trouble is he has no beets up there. <laughs> well, we have no way of knowing whether the evolution, if it was even corresponding to the same proteins on Mars as here, whether the accidents of the, of the evolution would have started with maybe the wrong-handed threads. So there's no way to tell. So after much thought, you see you can't do it. And so you conclude, it's impossible. However, about five or six years ago, uh, certain experiments indicated that they got produced all kinds of puzzles. I won't go into the detail. We got into tighter and tighter difficulties, more and more paradoxical situation until somebody proposed, Lee and Yang proposed, maybe the principle that right and left symmetry, that nature is the same for right and left, is not right. And that would help to explain a number of mysteries. And for he, uh, Li and Yang proposed some more direct experiments to demonstrate this, and I'll just mention the most direct of all the experiments, the easiest way to tell, or experiment on, well, there were several first experiments which were quite clear, but the one that's easiest to explain is this, that when we have a radioactive disintegration, uh, which, for example, which in which an electron and a neutrino are emitted, for example, this is one that we talked about before, electron and antineutrino. Or this is a neutron disintegrating into a proton, electron, and an antineutrino. Or this corresponding thing can happen to a neutron and a nucleus. Anyway, there are many radioactivities in which the charge of the nucleus increases by one and an electron comes out. The thing that's interesting is that if you measure the spin, electrons are spinning as they come out. If you measure the spin, you find out that they're spinning to the left. That is a definite significance, that the electron, when it comes out of the disintegration, is turning this way. And that helical description is a left-hand thread. It's as though, in the beta decay, the gun that was shooting out the electron were a rifled gun. And there's two ways to rifle a gun, because there's a direction, out. And then there's a question, do you turn it this way or that way as you go out? And the experiment is that the electrons come from a rifled gun, rifled, twisted to the left. And so, using this fact, we can call up the Martian and say, listen, take a radioactive stuff. Now, I would have prepared a, a particular example, a neutron. And uh, look at the electrons which come from such a beta decay. And then the, you define left by this screw thread. And let's see, you let, uh, it'll take me some while to figure out how to do it in detail. Say the electron's going up and the direction of motion of the way it's spinning is into the body on the left side, and that's where the heart goes. <laughs> Something like that. I'd have to think a little bit more of it. But anyway, it is possible to tell right from left, and thus the law of this, that world was symmetrical for left and right, has collapsed.